Okay, I'm ready. Come on, so it's going to be able to move before a lot of the other Pokemon in the format, giving it that kind of advantage. But like you say, normally carrying those supportive moves. Hey guys, before we start, I just want to say uh, this match was super unfortunate and it was really sad and it kind of bummed me out because it was a really, you know, the player just played super good. Uh, but yeah. Uh, also, before we start, I just got to acknowledge that I was very tired after a day of work when I recorded this, uh, so I I'm going to say a lot of stuff that is objectively wrong, but I end up correcting myself. Uh, like, one of the things that I said throughout the, the, the stream was uh, that first impression is plus three and fake out is plus two. Fake out's plus three and first impression is plus two. I should have known that, so... Just wanted to point that out before I get a lot of comments, uh, and some of you will cheekily comment it anyway. Anyways, uh, enjoy the video, and let's get into it. So it is gonna be able to get those supportive okay, so what does he got? He's got... Dude, a dual weather... Wait, was this... Was this guy... Is he using the same team that he used at um, Japan uh, National Championships? Is this is this the same guy who used Golisopod back then? Or is this someone who saw that team and was like, okay, I have an idea? We're going to be diving into this match. Remember, the winner of this one will be advancing into that top 16. We have got the Golisopod and the Kyoga out for Tatsuya, and Ko has brought out the Rillaboom and the Thunderous. I mean, Similar, but yes, same guy. Okay. All right. By the way, Atmosphere, we still have to make our Gigantic Quest episode, so let me know when you're free to do that. Dang, the cropping's still weird. Hold on. It's going to take a lot of damage if it does stay on the field, so it has to be careful, and you've always got to be careful about the, there we go. the Thunderous as well. It's a prime mm -hmm. target if you are running it to go for the Dynamax, and it threatens both the Kyogre and the Glycopod being part bug type, and also the water typing there. It doesn't really Okay, so I didn't get a chance to fully absorb this team, but I would imagine Inner Focus Raikou, maybe dual screens, maybe Assault Vest. Who knows? It's, it's a Japanese team, so it could be anything. Um, he's facing off versus just sort, sort of standard Zacian. Kyogre. More about this thunderous. You know, we see it run often in a supporting role and sometimes in the I'm role. I'm hoping that this is like some crazy out, set and not like just AV Glycopod. As is the Kyogre on Tatsuya side. I think this is a very wise First impression into Thundy? Hmm? Deal out super effective damage against No. Dude, oh, everything's scared of the first impression because it goes before fake out. As well. And I think that's why as this Glycopod has gone for that first impression that would Actually, I mean, Glycopod's like pretty decent support for Groudon and Kyogre just by the fact it can like probably come close to one-shotting a Rillaboom. If it's like choice banded, it definitely KOs, but I really doubt that's the set. Would do a lot of damage to that Rillaboom and threaten that knockout is now gone. The to get that back onto the field, like you say, you're gonna have to switch it out to bring it back into play and have access to it. And are you able to? Yeah, I mean, like if you're gonna, it's you, you could use like dual weather thunderous you know as like a way to stave off grass types like Rillaboom, but like Golisopod has one thing over thunderous, and that's that its priority move is faster. It's its move that one shots is faster. And the thunderous with its electric type attacks. All well, right, probably just like Dynamax Thunderous because it can one shot Glycopod. I believe here on Ko's side of the field. Now, there are two options here, and I think going for the Thunderous yeah. indicates this is definitely... Uh, do we know the Thundi item going into the match? Has it been revealed? Coming out, possibly something like a Max Lightning. Like, by other matches? Start getting the speed up on Ko's side of the field. Yeah, no, so Glycepod is super good in the Calyrex Ice specifically. And it does wall uh, Zacian. Do could be that Glycepod, or is it more reasonable to be the Kyogre? I think more reasonable to be the Kyogre. As much as I wanted to be the Glycepod, I would love to see it, but it is the Kyogre. It does make a little bit more sense, but... Uh, very brave from Tatsuya to, to, you know, go for that Dynamax here. Like we've mentioned already, it is very threatened, even in a Dynamax state. I'd imagine for dual weather, you're probably like AV Groudon, Life Orb Kyogre. Type attacks that are coming out. Yeah, big chunk of damage from the Grassy Glide. Okay, I was wrong. That's weakness policy. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna say that there's probably screens on that on that Raikou or something. Sucker Punch. That's actually really nice for Calyrex Shadow. Um, probably gonna. Oh no. Okay, does it live? Yes, because Kyogre's busted, and if you don't run a lot of physical defense, you're throwing. You're taking the thunderous from him, right? My friend, you're taking the thunders from him, right? Okay, we're good. Yeah, and it doesn't really matter what I am. That's gone. No. No chance. Even if it was AV, I think that might have still KO'd. So early on and not allowing Ko to really get much out of that dynamic. I feel like the, the volume for the match is actually a little bit too high. Let me turn that down a little bit. Yeah, most Asian do carry play rough, but um like 
The light spot has enough physical defense where it could totally live one of those. All right, so we saw Sucker Punch first impression on Goliath Spot. Those are pretty standard. If it's, it's probably not a, it's probably like AV then on this sort of team. But you would imagine the Groudon would want to be AV. Could also probably be like White Herb. There's a lot of options for Groudon. Actually, you know, Citrus is also something that kind of pops into mind here. Something that we've seen in the past has been like eject button Golisopod being fairly decent if you want to use it, you know, for Golisopod sets in um, non-restricted formats and non-Dynamax formats. Because it does allow you to like cycle it in and out with like Incineroar and get like first impressions off. Personally, when I used Golisopod to get into Player's Cup 2, I, I used safety goggles because I just thought that was like the right play for beating uh, Glacier, which is what I was trying to wall out with it. But yeah, I mean, Kyogre's going down this turn if it doesn't protect, and I mean, there's a good chance it does. Play rough? Are you Citrus so you go back up? Tell me you're Citrus so you go back up. Tell me you're Citrus so you go back up. Ah. <laughs> Many Zacian's top cut uh, without player power, it's definitely more common to run play. Yeah, player rough is so much more common. Yeah, that's something that's like super nice about Golisopod is like, even if its ability is a hindrance to it as a, like a single unit, if you play it well enough, they gave it enough priority moves where like it's going to be able to just cycle in and out. And that was actually like a really smart play by Tetsuya, because there's really no point in protecting your Kyogre this turn. If we're being real, the Kyogre will, will either go down this turn or the next turn, so you might as well just put it on the line and go for a KO that turn, right? Like the, the worst thing that's going to happen is your Golisopod's going to switch out. Uh, and, and your Kyogre goes down, which means Glycepod comes back in and you get an Intimidate. So yeah, like I think the opponent was definitely just like, oh yeah, they want to protect the, the 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 Kyogre here. So maybe the Glycepod will switch out for Tornadus and the next turn they go for like, a, I don't know, because the Electric Train's up, right? So it, it might have been able to go for like um like a Tailwind and like Water Spout. Jokario, no spoilers. I haven't seen this yet. All I know is that there's a disconnect that loses this dude the match. This is going to be a lore video. This is going to be a lore video and a half. As as like the number one Golisopod fan, this is this has to be a lore video. Try not to cry this match. Thank you. Have a nice one. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously Kyogre at one HP, it goes down to like a single fake out. I mean, you could technically cycle it out if you really wanted to, send back in the Golisopod and like parting shot this turn, and that wouldn't be a terrible uh, move, because Kyogre is going to be able to outspeed like pretty much everything on the other side of the field at this point in the match. Um, and I don't think that's like a bad move at all, honestly, because uh, you already protected last turn. Holding on to Kyogre now that the grassy terrain is gone isn't that bad of a play, especially since the Glycopod's more or less only going to be able to fake out, or not fake out, but first impression. Um, oh, what am I saying? No, he didn't protect last turn. He attacked last turn. I'm stupid. I was thinking about the play that the opponent predicted. But yeah, no, you protect this turn on the fake out. Um, high horsepower. Yeah. Parting shot? Parting shot if you're real? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, no, it, literally because Rillaboom just straight up doesn't run protect because Assault Vest is one of the more common items. If it does, you know, protect Rillaboom's not that bad, but uh, since it's usually not running protect, the Golisopod just comes in and takes a KO. Oh, hello Golisopod. Dude, and that ball, the uh, the repeat ball, because it does that little cycle motion is so appropriate for Golisopod just because it's a cycle Pokemon, you know? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you if he was robbed. I, I will tell you if he was robbed this game or not. But yeah, this is this is already hype as hell. Even on that one HP. 
Yeah, I mean, Kyogre's being an absolute trooper right now, staying on the battlefield. But I think you make a good point about the relevance of the speed. Yeah, I mean, like, this is just a very easy turn to play. You f you first impression and you, like, go for, like, a, a an origin pulse. Oh, or into that. Maybe, I guess that that's, like, a safe play if you're trying to predict, like, the possibility of Protect Rillaboom. Because you guys mentioned that this this uh, these players had not been streamed yet. So it, I guess like it's not out of the question that Protect Rillaboom might be a thing, and it's not like you lose from this position ever anyways. So you might as well make that call. But if this if, if they had known that this isn't Protect Rillaboom, then first impression was always the play. Yeah, no, and Cinewar comes in, you win. Turn up the volume a little bit? Okay. I mean, I'm certainly interested to know with the Kyogre what... If you're talking about the DC, uh, he wasn't robbed, DC equals game loss, another way around it. Well, yeah, I mean, those are the rules, but when we're saying robbed, we mean that a, a freak accident cost him the game. It's not like he unpurposed DC'd, you know? That's, that's what we're trying to figure out, because I haven't seen the match yet. <laughs> this is my first viewing. All I know is that a DC happens costing him the match. <laughs> so yeah, they, and with the terrain there, it just makes a lot more sense. You, like you mentioned, the, it gets that accuracy boost in the rain. It is so Protect Rillaboom. Okay, so that was always the correct play then. So maybe like Miracle Seed on the Rillaboom, possible Koba Berry. Leech Life also very based move for Golisopod. Let's you recover some health, makes it easier to cycle in and out again. Oh, did the opponent click a turn one? I wasn't paying attention. Actually, yeah, no, now that you mention it, they did click it uh, turn one. Yeah, you live that because you're Goliath's pod and you're broken. Blur Blitz probably KOs, uh, depending on, like, you know, the investment. Yeah. And you get, oh, Goliath's pod gets to take the KO. Let's go. Okay, yeah, so no, Goliath's pod absolutely carried this game on its back. Yeah, I mean, you've got to say in that match, Kalisopod has definitely mm -hmm. been one of the standout Pokemon there. Mm -hmm. You've already mentioned the big turn in point in the game, the survival from the Kyle. Yeah, he's taking it 1 0. So if he wins the next match, he just wins the set. And then being able to return with the knockout onto mm -hmm. the Thunderous. That was a the huge turn in point in the game. But it was the use of the Kalisopod in that match where. I'm trying to think, like, that mm -hmm. turn one the opponent then played, the dash, like,. I think they both played pretty much perfectly, in my opinion. The opponent made a read that didn't pay off because Tatsuya read the read, you know? It's it's not like it's not like Ko could have really played that much better in that game. I think Tatsuya just outplayed him, you know? Yeah, and I think Ko came out very strong wanting to, you know, pin down that Kyogre, having the Thunderous and having the Rillaboom on the field, prime targets. I mean, big damage. Tatsuya doesn't really need to lead off Glycepot again. However, versus Rillaboom, it's super nice for, like, avoiding that fake-out pressure since first impression's gonna go first. It's like, hey, nice fake-out, nerd. Um, I'm gonna first impression and you don't get to fake out my Pokemon. It's kind of a cool, it's almost like a pseudo-quick guard. That's the big thing, I think, because if you do activate that, then you we just saw what happened um, and we know you've got a rough idea as well of how how much damage it can take so you really want to try and lay some damage down onto it maybe utilizing something like Lization mm -hmm. to get damage onto it where it's in range for something like Thunderous to then take it down with a Max Lightning or Rillaboom to come in and take it down with a Grassy Glide. Rillaboom can function quite well even if the Glycopod's on the field because it's got that protect to get around the field. Yeah, I mean like... I, I suppose, like, a Zacian lead isn't that bad, but the thing is, you, like, this team really, really wants to lead off with a fake-out user regardless, mainly just because, like, we know that that's not support Thunderous. Like, it revealed it was, like, offensive defiant uh, from what we could tell because, you know, technically it Dynamaxed and it could have been any set, but, uh, you know, it could have been, like, a, a Max Lightning off of Thunderbolt, but probably not. It's probably Wild Charge, you know. We, we've seen Thunderous in this format before on these sort of, like, uh, Kyogre, Zacian teams, so... Uh, it's 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 fair to say it's probably just defiant. <laughs> First impression goes out. Wait, does it? 
Does it? Hold on. Are they both the same speed tier? I could have sworn fake out is plus two, first impressions plus three. Oh no, first impression is plus two. Well, I guess that's what you get when you when you run a move that you're not aware of. Um, okay, yeah, all right. I could have sworn it was plus three. Oh, you know what? I was mixing them up. Why would I? Why would I mix them up like that? Yeah, that's a big thing, and I think the one thing you could say Cog could lean on a little bit more in this one is bringing those... Alright, I mean, but still, first impression is a really valuable tool on that lead if you really think about it. Because even if the opponent, like, has to go for fake out, they're gonna have to fake out the Golisopod, which is infinitely less useful than faking out any Pokemon that's next to it, barring a support mon, you know? Really help it out, and, you know, we saw how impactful Tetsuya's Kyogre was in that first game, so maybe Cog thinking, well... The, the Dynamax Thunderous didn't really... Hi from Puerto Rico. Hi from uh, the USA. ...go with, with Plan B and kind of take the game, take Tatsuya's game to him now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing these... Okay, yeah. Well, that's that's more... Thank you, chat, for correcting me. Tatsuya is one game away from advancing to the next stage of the competition, getting into that illustrious top 16. And unfortunately, the loser of the set will be knocked out of the World Championships. So, Ko, I think, needs to kind of call back on the experience you have from being a previous world champion in a different division and kind of think, how do I go into this next game? We saw actually the time, even between the switches, how much time Ko was taking to think about, you know... It's a lot of downtime between these matches. To be not just that turn, but two or three turns ahead and thinking about those win conditions. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, even if you do lead off, like, a light spot into, like, Rillaboom Thunderous, you still just first impression that first turn or fake out into max airstream but that also wastes a turn of dynamax from the thunderous that could be used effectively on a kyogre so i can see how that's actually like a really solid lead into the duo as he does the same thing it pretty much comes down to like a a, a read here you know all right dual weather yep if you don't know if you don't know this is something that everyone should know if you ever run dual weather your kyogre always has to be slower than your uh, than your Groudon because otherwise your Groudon's gonna actively make your Kyogre worse if you do a a dual restricted lead. Uh, beyond that, it does make the team a little bit weird because you have to run either a slower Kyogre or a very fast Groudon, which I would argue the very fast Groudon is the better uh, of the two if you're running a, a Tailwind team. Uh, but I guess Tailwind does give you a little bit more wiggle room with your speed tiers. It's not like you're going to have to outspeed things at plus one with your Kyogre. You're going to be mostly going for those plus two outspeeds. Are these the finals? No, no, no. We're watching um this match between uh, Tatsuyu Wat... Let's see if I can pronounce it. Tatsuyu Watanuki uh, and Ko Tsukide. Tsukide. Uh, which apparently this ended tragically. Okay, yeah, I mean, if you send in the Incineroar and Dynamax the Groudon, you have to be going for, like, a max rock fall onto that uh, Thunderous, otherwise this is not a great play. The question is, is, the, is this max rock fall off of, like, Rock Tomb or Stone Edge? Because I'm a Stone Edge guy, uh, mainly just because I like that damage, and... Okay, let's see. Grassy Glide and the Groudon. That does like almost nothing though is the issue. And he does go for the Rockfall. And while this isn't a lot of damage, the damage through Protect plus the chip. Okay, never mind. That is a lot of damage. I thought it was a little bit bulkier than that. Um, because of like the chip plus the damage behind the Protect, it's still like in range of the next one after it Dynamaxes. Yeah, I mean, he can fake out the, the Rillaboom here, obviously. Like, that's going to be, like, the optimal play. But the Rillaboom could also, you know, Dynamax and go for Max um, Drum Solo into the Groudon. However, I think at minus one, that's probably not the best play, especially since you're, like, uh, probably just going to be parting shot food. Dynamax Thunderous also isn't uh, as great of a, of a play here. It's, it's weird. Like, he's got his opponent pinned where it's, like, you know, regardless of what he Dynamaxes here. And I think he has to Dynamax something this turn to try to turn it around. Otherwise, the Groudon's going to get to, like, roll all over him, unless... I guess also the Incineroar could come out, but... I wouldn't be surprised if this is, like, a White Herb Groudon, considering the AV's usually going to be in the Golisopod here, and it's not in the Kyogre, because we saw Weakness Policy. So, I, I would imagine maybe it's White Herb. I have no idea. Or did we see a Life Orb? 
I don't think we saw a life orb. I wasn't paying attention. Protect. He's just going to rock fall again. No shot he doesn't rock fall again. Brick break. He tried. Max this dude's got thunder punch. He's crazy. No, okay. All right. So, honestly, it's it's not over for, for Ko, obviously, from this position. Uh, his Kyogre could come in, but the, the issue is what I stated earlier. When you're running a dual weather team, you're either going to be running a faster Groudon or a slower Kyogre, and I would argue the faster Groudon is usually the better of the two. So for all we know that if the if like Ko is running like a bulky Kyogre, there's a solid shot the Groudon at, could outspeed here. So I would say that Zacian coming in isn't that bad either, but the issue with that is the Zacian's pressured by Incineroar being on the field since Incineroar is unintimidated. A Flare Blitz will be doing a ton into the Zacian, and it will probably pick up a KO on the Groudon from this range obviously but it's it's like he's sacrificing too much there you know it's another position where it's like he's he's just got to make a really tough call and regardless of what he does it's like still going to be a climb to get back into the match it's life orb okay it is life orb sorry when when i'm like going back and forth between chat i miss little things like that like the protect turn one from the rillaboom and the life orb on the groudon All right, yeah. Um, we still don't know the speed tier of this Groudon. Um, so bringing Kyogre in here, I think it's nice. Not only do you override the weather of the the sand. Yeah, like I said, if this if this is like a faster Kyogre, I can just water spot here and pick up a double. Um, but obviously there's a lot of plays that can be made. Since it's Life Orb Groudon, we might see a Protect, but the issue with that is he's running Max Rockfall, which means he's probably got like Rock Slide, Stone Edge, or Rock Tomb. He's got Thunder Punch on this thing for sure. He has to have Precipice Blades. He uh, he either has Protect as his last move, or he's just running like a, an AV set move-wise, uh, move but like with, with a different item. <laughs> Incineroar. Okay, so no Zashi in this game. And honestly, if there's... It's it's good that he held on to the Rillaboom, because if you don't have a Zashian, if you lose the Rillaboom, you just lose this matchup already. Yeah, Glyspot comes in. If it's AV, it totally takes like a water spot. There's no chance it doesn't. Um, but notably, first impression still an option. Uh, like, like you guys pointed out to me, fake out does go before first impression because I'm a big dum dum. But yeah, I mean the the uh, the Glyspot could get like faked out here, uh, and then just go into like a, a Max Geyser into the the uh, Groudon. And yep, this is a fast Groudon. I told you guys, I told you guys, it has to be fast. It's gotta be fast. Oh, okay. No, this is another you predicted bad turn. Okay, yeah, guess what's coming in? Can you guess what's coming in? It's probably the Kyogre. It's probably the Kyogre. There it is. Yeah, no. Because uh, the Incineroar is in huge danger here. If this Kyogre is... We know it's, it's slower than the Groudon. The Groudon might be jolly. Dude, I think the Groudon might be jolly, to be honest, just to ensure it always outspeeds, like you know, bulky Kyogres, that could be a thing, um, but if it is adamant, then I, I don't know, um, this Kyogre might just be like one speed point slower than the Groudon, which means that it's probably going to outspeed this Kyogre as well. Yeah, and Thunder Punch Groudon in this format, I don't think is as bad as it would be in other formats. People always tell me in like previous formats, run Thunder Punch Groudon, it lets you beat Kyogre. It really doesn't, It, but for like max moves, it totally does. And it's also like, just like a super good tool for blocking sleep. Also, we saw the Kyogre flinch before this move went out, so we do know this Kyogre is faster. This match is pretty much wrapped up. Because we, we have first impression off of Golisopod. We have Incineroar with Fake Out in the back. It literally, as soon, as soon as this Kyogre goes down, I'm pretty sure that Tetsuya just wins. Now, mm -hmm. it will be able to 
to knock out the, the Kyogre on Cole's side of the field if it doesn't have access to Protect. And if it does have the, the Max Guard option here, it's kind of forced to go for that, leaving the Incineroar in a little bit of an awkward position where it will get knocked out by a potential Water-type attack coming out from Tatsuya's Kyogre that's sitting in a decent position now, healthy on the field, where Cole's side, like you say, the Groudon, even though it went down that last turn, has done the work that Tatsuya needed. Yeah, I mean, like, first impression totally knocks out, like, both Pokemon on the other side of the field. First impression into Kyogre is, like, the objective better play, just in case you, like, were experiencing a speed tie there. And Incinera coming in is also very good because if Kyogre protects this turn, then Fake Out goes into it next turn and it like doesn't matter. I'd imagine this is Assault Vest uh, Golisopod and it probably has like Liquidation as its last move. Because we saw Sucker Punch, First Impression, and Leech Life so far. It's probably Liquidation. If not Aqua Jet. Harding Shot into Golisopod. Yeah, he's still got Fake Out pressure. Granted, the Rillaboom is coming back in. So that fake out's going to be faster. But we, like I said, we saw Sucker Punch. So a Sucker Punch from this range, if the Kyogre, I'm pretty sure it undynamaxes this turn. Once again, I'm foiled by me checking chat. Um, I think this is the last turn of its Dynamax. Sucker Punch would pick up the KO from that range. Yeah, I don't think you could have put it any better there, Lou. I think the fact that Rillaboom's coming onto the field now and it's going to have its grassy terrain active again Tetsuya is just playing this so phenomenally. I'm going to be really sad at the end of this. I'm actually going to be really sad at the end of this, aren't I? What rank of the tournament is this? I think this is top 8. Pretty sure this is top 8. Might be top 16. Pretty sure it's top 8. Yeah. And I, uh, the Kyogre could always switch out this turn, but it still is like... It, it, there's no offensive pressure being put on here on anything other than the Glycopod. I'm be real with you guys. Rillaboom probably doesn't KO Glycopod from that range if it's like defensively built, which they usually are. Uh, but it will be able to proc emergency exit. So that's kind of big. But I think the play is always going to be fake out into Rillaboom, Sucker Punch into Kyogre. Nah, that might not even be it. I think you always just like double attack the Kyogre now that I think about it. Because it protected last turn, right? <laughs> it could cycle out though like as soon as it comes back in it's still a threat but still you have your own kyogre you know oh it's protect incineroar yeah on the incineroar again a new meta trend that's been really popular coming into the world championship as the fake out connects with a critical hit all right yeah that that protect probably is going to win him the game here because protect means that the incineroar doesn't go down this turn and Golispod can actually cycle out again so yeah um it actually probably does he miss does he miss does he miss does he miss he does not miss um so i don't know if it's in range of grassy glide i can't remember is this this isn't an intimidated rillaboom is it and we do know at this point in the match it's it's probably faster this kyogre on our side of the field do I want to post? No, I already, I already know that he loses. I don't, I don't really mind those spoilers. I just don't want like specific turn spoilers for this match. Like on this turn at this timestamp, the 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 dynamaxes and dies, like that sort of thing, you know. Okay. Protect from Kyogre, smart, because now you have first impression pressure. Uh, if it's AV, if it's AV, Glycopod, it totally lives here. Origin Pulse, dodge. Glyce dodge. No Glyce dodge. Probably gonna live. It's it's goaded. It's goaded. Yep. No, I knew it. That's AV. That is a completely goaded Glycopod. You always just you have first impression pressure. Granted, your thunders aren't terribly accurate, but 
that Rillaboom's gotta switch. It like it, it is 100% necessary if if it doesn't want to protect. And even then, you're putting pressure on everything. Like a double protect here wouldn't be a terrible play from from Ko, just to get like more recovery. But then you're wasting your like grassy terrain turns, which is gonna make it a lot harder for you to deal with the opposing Kyogre. Yeah, I mean, first impression here into the um, first impression into the Goli or into the into the Rillaboom slot plus like a Thunder or like whatever move would KO from uh, this this Kyogre onto the other Kyogre is probably the right play. Because even if it does protect here, it's like not the end of the world, and you always get damage. I feel like the Rillaboom needs to protect here, though. Like, I think the pressure you put on the field with the Kyogre was probably fine. Yeah, it's going to switch. So it's like, they didn't want to lose the Rillaboom because Rillaboom's like their only out. Like, like no, no, no shade to Kyogre, but Rillaboom's carrying this match on its back. No way. No way. <laughs> yeah, he knew that Rillaboom wasn't going to stay on the field. Uh, like I said, I'm like, the Rillaboom has to protect or something here. If you want to play it safe, you target anyways. But he played it crazy. He just wins here. He literally just wins here. There's no out other than like high horsepower crit. And even then, he still has pivoting tools. Like he can parting shot out. And, and win with like Incineroar by itself at this point because that that opposing Incineroar is too low your Incineroar is at full health you have three Pokemon Dude, I'm getting anxiety. I know what happens. It has to happen literally any second now. I know what happens in this match. I'm getting anxiety about it. Something else I want to point the attention to is if you take a look at the my time on both of our players, we've talked a couple of times about how Ko has been, you know, utilizing every second. Dude, Ko loses off of my time too. There's no way Ko wins this match. He has to click all of his moves super fast. He's got to... He's got to like win this this absurdly difficult 2v3 that might as well be a 1v3. There's no chance he could win this match in a hundred million years. From this position, there's no way. Tatsuyu could literally protect every turn for the next three turns and still win. Okay. Yeah, he's got 34 seconds left. Like three more turns, two more turns, even if it like if you slow on picking his moves, and and he just he just wins. But Ko's doing the right thing at this level of play in in like a in like a a win or like fall out of the tournament situation. You play for the disconnect. This is the highest level of play, and play for the disconnect is still the correct thing to do. Yeah, I've seen 6,532 different possibility or different possible outcomes, and the only way he wins is by a disconnect, a freak accident. The wonder of you from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 8 just walked by the switch. You literally just play for timer here. You don't even have to go on the offensive. You can. You can, but he doesn't have the tools. You fake out the Rillaboom here. You first impression, whatever. If you have Protect on the Glyspot, if somehow I got it wrong and it's still not Assault Vest, which it totally is. All right, yeah, there, there it is. Tetsuya has 28 seconds left. There's the Flare Blitz. It, it hangs on because Glyspot's busted. Drill Run into the Incineroar, KOs, you literally do not lose this match. There is no way he could possibly lose this match. That is huge, just being able to take that attack. And then 
get the knockout. That's massive. This, and, uh, this Goliath, I'll, I'll say it at the end. I'll say it at the end. I will say what I'm going to say at the end. Now it is threatened there it is. The Incineral and the Rillaboom. And it looks like there's been a little bit of a communication issue here with the game. Yeah, just a little bit of an issue. But I'm sure the judges will let us know what's happening in a couple of minutes. While we wait for that <gasps> My God. I just want to talk a little bit about Goliath Because I feel like every... How did they announce it? ...thinking through all the turns and time of how to pivot around the offensive pressure that Tetsuo was able to... And he takes a game loss for that. And he take, I don't even know if I want to watch the rest of this. Guys, do I want to watch the rest of this? It's a short match. It's a seven. Uh, we'll watch the rest of it. substantial amount of damage onto it before you actually hit those super effective attacks into it and Zashian's that one Pokemon where it doesn't really have the reliance on or need for speed control where it can just fire off those attacks and big powerful attacks that that first turn without much worry about okay oh I'm not gonna all right I'm just that is that is maddening that is maddening that Tatsuya could literally play this perfectly and lose that match I mean, you, you want to know something? Pokemon is a game that has a lot to do with your mentality going into a match. If you're tilted, the chances of you winning that match drastically reduce because you need to focus. He is in, he is in top cut of the world championships. He was about to go to the next round, winning his match 2-0 with one of the coolest Pokemon ever made that is hardly get used, and he gets a disconnect loss. The turn, the very turn, he was going to win. That tilts the hell out of you. That actually just tilts the hell out of you. Like, I wouldn't be able to win from this situation. How is that a loss? He had two Pokemon left? It's, it's because the, the disconnect, there's a code on the Switch, and you get different codes, and the codes tell you who Switch disconnected from the match, who Switch was at fault, because I won't say people were at fault, because this definitely was not his fault. His Switch was at fault. So you lose the match because your switch disconnected. I would imagine it's an accident because um, because there was no way you would disconnect on purpose there. Yeah, neither player would have disconnected deliberately there because it dis because it would tell you if if the other guy disconnected from this match. He would have he would have gotten that loss. He had to play to his outs. You can start taking some big KOs, and I really like this bold offensive play from Code coming straight out here. Tatsu is also going to go for the Dynamax, however, onto that Groudon, and I would not be surprised. I'm like not even paying attention to the match at this point because I'm just fuming. I'm I'm like actually fuming that this happened at Worlds. You know, not allowing it to deal so much damage with its water type moves. It's going to be a protect, however, from the Incineral. So no fake out coming out straight away from Tatsuya. Just playing that little bit more defensively. As the max airstream comes out... It is wired, but one would imagine the wire just came loose. Okay, so there's an Incineral in the field. So clearly that... Sorry, I'm catching up. There's Clearly, there's an Incineral in the field. So the Thunderous has to have plus one in attack. Max Rockfall, you're faster. I, I, what did, did the Kyogre lead off or did Rillaboom let off? And then it switched into Kyogre. Crit. He's getting a crit. He's getting it. He got a crit there. The universe wants him to win. The universe wants him to win this match. <laughs> and he's still faster than this Kyogre. We know that. Oh, wait, no, it airstreamed. It airstreamed, so he's not. I was gonna say, like, if, if he if he was, you know, he, he could thunder, he could max lightning. I like how we started off this stream saying, hey guys, let's do some team building for Series 13. And then someone goes, D -d 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 did you see the Golisopod match? And now I'm going to go to sleep angry. 
active on the field without an intimidate mm -hmm. onto it like we saw from that that start of the game it is going to be hitting a lot harder so Groudon in a very precarious position. just so you guys know this is not at all Ko's fault it's also not Tetsuya's fault no one here was at fault for what happened in this game because I'd imagine Ko did not feel good about winning this but he had to do it because you're at Worlds you need to play to win even if he won the world championships off of this game, if Ko ended up winning the whole thing, you, you you do not take away that achievement from him. But still, this has got a sting for Tetsuya. Yeah, emergency exit procs. <laughs> Look, God nerfed Galisopod. <laughs> Blazing Black, you're coming in here a lot later than anyone else did, so you don't know the context behind this. I'm probably going to upload this reaction to YouTube. You're, you're going to have to check this out on YouTube. This is absurd. So you've got a pretty free max quake if you want here and now showing once again how good that emergency <laughs> exit is. <laughs> Nintendo saw that Tatsuya owned a switch light and they said nope. Appreciating the grassy mm -hmm. glide. How many Pokemon can say that? Yes, hit me with that grassy <laughs> glide because you're gonna put me in range mm -hmm. for that water spout to get the my ability activated to allow me to get my incineral back on the field. And even if it hadn't activated there, he's gonna be in a position to get that first impression and pressure the Rillaboom the next turn anyway. So it makes it very difficult. Alright, Zashin comes in. That's actually Not the kind of a lot of pressure <laughs> what's nice is that incinerator did come in mid turn that last turn so like you know he's, it's fine he can do whatever he wants yep there's the fake out gets protected on obviously that's what you got to do max quake probably into that kyogre slot i doubt he made the read there yeah dude this is so bad this is actually so bad they are directly connected. A wire came loose. Yeah, the fact that you can't reconnect is such a huge issue. It has something to do with game sync, but that feels like something that they could easily resolve with like some kind of pro. I, obviously, I'm not like a game developer. I'd imagine there's some some kind of protocol you could call where it's like, okay, both games pause. You have like 30 seconds to reconnect, or like a minute to reconnect, and when you reconnect it'll resync the games and you're good to go. I'd imagine you have to do that, but I, I, I don't think that they have that. I, w I hope, I really hope that they include that in the next game. If, if after this, after this match happening at such a high level, listen, Pokemon fixes things not when a bunch of people complain about them, but funny enough, when the competitive circuit at World showcases an issue with the game, we've seen it before. They nerfed Mega Kangaskhan. They, they, they just, they like nerfed Thunder Wave on Thunderous. Like they did a lot of stuff, right? You might not have noticed they nerfed Thunder Wave because they didn't do enough. Uh, but they nerfed Thunder Wave on, on Thunderous. Oh, I'm just so sad about this. But yeah, no, it, it, there is hope that this incident wakes up something at the Game Freak offices and they go, yeah, we need some kind of protocol to reconnect people. We know it's not AV Grout on it. It doesn't take a water spot too kindly. They nerfed Talonflame, they buffed Will-O-Wisp. <laughs> 
then the offensive pressure of the water moves as you know a neutral. It doesn't get a boost or a reduction. Someone needs to take the bullet and get to grand finals and ally switch the whole game, dude. My life mission. I'm gonna do that. Next year, I'm gonna qualify for worlds. I'm gonna get all the way to top. Let's do top four so I don't ruin it. Top four, get on stream and just ally switch the whole game and see how far I get. Yeah, you know, double protect there is pretty smart considering fake out pressure and press blades probably does a significant chunk to uh, Kyogre, if not one shotting Zacian. Since we did see Life Orb. Yeah, I like the play from Core to double protect there because for the one reason that the grassy terrain is making sure and being aware of when it's ending because now, like that last turn, if you mm. switched in the, the Rillaboom there, it would have come in and then the grassy terrain would have ended. So not really preferable. So what you want to try and do is get your Kyogre off the field if you are wanting to utilize the rain. Um, again, in this in this battle is to bring the Rillaboom in and get that grassy train back in effect. But doing so is kind of risky because it could be the fact that Tatsuya takes a risk here. Goes yeah, I mean, like, the sun is up, right? But it, like I said, it's still not an AV Groudon. And while Incinera is probably going to take, like, a water spout here, Groudon doesn't take it very well. He does get a double protect, though. Or not a double protect. What am I saying? He does protect this turn after the fake out last turn. And in, into the double protect that happened. Sorry, I'm, I'm pretty tired tonight. And this isn't helping my mood. <laughs> Alright, um... What's what's even the play here? Flare Blitz Zacian? Yeah. Because you're faster. Well, no, you're not faster, but... You know. The issue is... The Pokemon that you want to switch into, Golisopod, this turn... You want to switch into Golisopod to preserve Incinera for more fakeouts... Is weakened. Yeah, he's like in a really good position here, but that that Rillaboom is about to clean up. And he's got, he's still got fake out pressure. Last turn he protected. Do we know his last Pokemon? No, we don't. Dude, like it has to be like Raikou if he wants to win this, or like even Tornadus could probably do it. But if it's Kyogre, like this isn't great because Grassy Terrain is up, your Incinera is low, and you have two Pokemon a week to week to Rillaboom. Unnecessary damage from the Water Spout, and you kind of benefit from the Grassy Terrain as well. You know, you're going to recover a little bit of health back, and you keep both Pokemon because I think in this scenario you want to keep the Sun on the field for as long as you can until you've dealt with that Rillaboom, and then hopefully whatever you've got in the back can come in and kind of go toe to toe. Yep, that thing's gone. Incinera is far too low, dude. Oh, you can look at you can top left corner. You can see the pain. This hurts, dude. The literal only way this works is if he was somehow like life orb, fast hurricane, tornadoes, and he confused the and he confused the Kyogre, and then you know. Janichi Masuda himself walked up to the stage and snapped Coast Switch in half. That's like the only way he wins. Just bad situation to be in if you are tattoo yeah, where the Rillaboom is what you want. Coz put himself in a, a great position here to close this game out. And uh, you know, I made a lore video a while ago called the unluckiest player in, in Pokemon history, and it was Aaron Zhang because he missed all those Will O Wisps. Guys, I think we have a new one. I think I think someone just beat Aaron Zhang in terms of unluckiness. This wasn't even an RNG thing. This was a this was hardware malfunction. On the turn he won. Okay, but imagine if Water Spout crits both, or Origin Pulse crits both. Imagine, no, because he's you know the Kyogre has a speed boost. Yeah, and you can see how impactful that 
max airstream was at turn one just putting that 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 Kyogre they're both sitting here like oh god you know, said, like, if what just happened slower than all of these big threats then it can put pressure on itself and it, it did that exactly in that game it made it very difficult for Tetsuya to to really Hold on. I want to see if they acknowledge anything further. It's the one Pokemon that you want against Kyogre. I mean, it took a grass glide in the terrain, but like you say, a little bit too late. And with that speed disadvantage as well, it just lofted up for Corny. He is going to be moving on to the next round. But what a game for us to kick off with. We get to see some of these really unique choices and them working so well as well in that Glycopod. I mean, I have loved talking about Glycopod. It's a bit. Yeah, they worked so well that they pretty much won the match. Oh my god. Guys. Yeah, no, I said this. Ko probably doesn't feel great about this either. This is not at all Ko's fault. This is not at all Tetsuya's fault. This is a hardware malfunction that was completely unstoppable. But, like, the resolution should have been clear. You know what I would have... I, I, get, I get why Ko didn't do it. I get why Ko didn't do this. Because you're at Worlds, you you literally are in top cut of Worlds. You have to play, right? I don't even know if I would do this. But somewhere out there, there is someone in this world who, in this position, would have forfeited Game 3 and said, you won Game 2. It's not me. I don't know if that person's in this chat. But someone would have done that. That is absurd. Pokemon, at the very least, I think that at the very least, given what just happened and how well he played and how it was a freak accident, completely the fault of the hardware, I think they should distribute the Golisopod as like an event, at the very least, you know, something like that. Wow. Oh, look at Osiris. Even he's just scarred by this event. Shout out Osiris VGC. Oh my god. Dude, I don't even know if I want to team build tonight. <laughs> Alright, everyone say bye to YouTube. Say, say bye to YouTube. Not ending the video till everyone says bye to YouTube. Come on, everyone. Bye, YouTube. Good night. Bye. Give him a 2023 Worlds invite or something. I mean, someone this good probably didn't even need... Probably doesn't even need like a, a free worlds invite. Nah, bro. If you studied the if you studied the meta, and I can't even read that. There are too many. If you studied the meta and practice different teams, you don't just give up uh, the match. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. You don't just give up the match. I said there's someone out in the world who would have given up that match. It's not anyone in this chat because that takes a lot of guts to do. It's not even me. I wouldn't have done that. But yeah, bye YouTube.